capacity is the maximum output that you can get from your organization, either to produce a product or provide a service. So it is important for you to know the capacity of your organization and also where you want to be in the future for to meet the demand in the future, if you see uh, an, a spike or you see um, you want to take on your, for example, competitors. So you need to know, okay, where is it that I want to get? How much output you want to get into? And then assess the, the current capacity of your organization. And if there is a gap, that's how much you want to expand. So in this chapter, we're going to learn about the factors in capacity and capacity planning. Different, we're going to learn about different terminologies and we're going to learn about different measures such as efficiency measures, utilization, and etc. And also we're going to learn about the overall steps that you would need to do in capacity planning. Um, and also we're going to learn about some um, financial analysis, the cost volume analysis to do to um, do a good job in capacity planning regarding some economic concerns such as cost and profit, is it viable, is it economically feasible, is it profitable? So these are uh, some major concerns that you want to consider when you want to do capacity plan. Hope you enjoy this chapter and learn a lot. The learning objective for chapter five, is strategic capacity planning for products and services are as follows. By the end of this chapter, you should be able to explain the three key and main questions in capacity planning, which are what type of capacity we need, how much we need, and when do we need it. Next is you should be able to describe ways of measuring and defining capacity. Determinants of effective capacity, considerations in developing and evaluating capacity alternatives. Also, you should be able to explain the pros and cons of operating in-house, which means that you produce the product at home compared to outsourcing from overseas, for example. Also, you should be able to describe practices for developing capacity strategies. And finally, you should be able to execute cost volume calculations to determine which alternative is best. Before we learn about capacity planning, how to plan the capacity, we first need to check if we understand what capacity is. What is capacity? Capacity is the upper limit or the ceiling. That means the lower limit, upper limit. On the load that an operating unit can handle. So that means that how much product or service a unit can provide or produce. The minimum and the maximum. That's capacity. The capability of a system or a unit. The need for capacity includes the capacity in terms of equipment, equipment to produce products or provide a service, how fast that equipment can produce a product or and uh, how much they can produce. Also the capacity for a space. We need a space to put uh, equipment, for example, to um, settle in our human force and etc. So capacity in terms of a space is also important, how big the space is. And also another type of capacity is employee skills. When you hire an employee, they have different capabilities in terms of what they know and how efficient they can work. So that's their capacity. This is called soft capacity. Capacity planning is a long-term decision-making. That's why it's called a strategic capacity planning. For example, when you want to plan the space or the number of equipment, the type of equipment, that's a decision for long-term. So a strategic decision-making. What is the goal of capacity planning? The goal of capacity planning is to match the long-term demand that you have 
with the supply that you want to provide with your capacity. So an organization can be over capacity or under capacity based on its capacity to be able to respond to the demand, supply the demand, and also the demand in the market. If an organization works and perform over capacity, that means that they have a lot of resources and capacities that they are not using. So they have they are, or their operating cost is too high. Or when an organization work on, the, on their capacity, that means that they have a strained resources. So they cannot really, they are not able to supply and respond to the demand in the market. So that's a possibility of loss of customers and disappointed customers. Important capacity planning questions and concerns. There are three main, three main questions and key questions in capacity planning. The first question is, what type of capacity you need or your organization need? And then the next question, how much of that type of capacity your organization needs? And then the third question is, when you need it. There are other main related questions to these three main questions. That question like, how much will it cost to extend and increase your capacity or that capacity expansion? How much did it cost? And that's an important question as well. Also, what are the potential benefits and risks associated with that expansion? Or is there sustainability issues or concern? Or should capacity be changed all at once? Or can it be done in incremental manner? And also, another question is, can the supply chain handle necessary changes that you would do by expanding your capacity? That's also an important question to consider. Capacity decisions are strategic as we learned, and therefore they have direct impact on the capability of an organization to respond to future demands. Also, if you consider capacity uh, in, in terms of equipment, for example, or even uh, human resources, human force, then operating that resource is going to cost money. So capacity decisions are going to impact the operating cost of your organization. Also, capacity decisions are a major determinant of initial cost as well. So if you purchase a property to expand the capacity of your organization, your manufacturing site, for example, that's going to cost you money. Also, purchasing the new equipment or hiring new uh, human forces, that's going to cost money. So the initial cost is also going to be impacted by capacity decisions. Also, capacity decisions often involve long-term commitment of resources. If you purchase an equipment, then that means that you're going to have to also purchase the um, maintenance for that, also afford the maintenance for that, or also um, any other input that that equipment is going to require. So that's a long-term commitment of resources. Capacity decision also affect competitiveness in your organization. How so? So this is easier to imagine if you consider two organizations that they are competitive to each other having a high capacity and also an efficient capacity is going to make it easier for the organization that owns it to compete with the other organization. So competitiveness is also impacted by the capacity decisions. Also, another impact of capacity decision is the ease of management. When, when you have the capability, when you have the capacity, it's easier, that's you don't have the restrictions. One of your restrictions is eased up. So 
you are not restricted by the capacity of your organization. So the managing that organization is going to be easier compared to when you don't have the capacity to respond to, for example, future demands. So ease of management is another, another point here. Also, capacity planning have become more important and complex due to globalization. So because of the globalization, uh, we're going to have considered the, the market has expanded. Also, the competitiveness have become more fierce. So that's also apparent here. And capacity decision need to be planned in advance due to the consumption of financial and other resources. So this is not something to um, be hasty about and be quick about. You have to plan in advance and um, be proactive. Defining and measuring capacity. To be able to plan your capacity, first you need to define the capacity and also measure the capacity. Measurement for capacity should not be that you would need to update them. So for example, dollar values is not a good measurement for capacity because dollar value is going to change due to inflation so you would need to have uh, to update the measurement as well so go with the units for measurement that do not need updating there are two useful definitions for capacity uh, that are that are popular. One is the design capacity and the other one is the effective capacity. The design capacity is the lab conditioned designed um, that they build the equipment or service for. So that's the maximum output rate, theoretically, rate for the service or the, the product capacity that is designed for an operation or process or a facility. For example, um, the if you if you look at the speedometer of a, a car, the ma you, you see the maximum speed, but that's that's the design capacity in terms of a speed for that car. It's not necessarily going to guarantee that you're going to achieve that max speed that it shows you, you can see in front of you uh, when you drive the car. That's the design design capacity. It's not practical. And most of the time, actually, you can't use the maximum capacity design capacity the other term or definition for capacity is the effective capacity the effective capacity is the design capacity the maximum theoretical capacity minus allowances such as personal time and maintenance so it's more practical that's a capacity that you can count on we're going to learn more about these two with more examples Measuring system effectiveness. So we learned two definitions and terms for capacity. And those were the design capacity, which is the maximum possible output a system or an equipment is designed for, which is really not practical to achieve, but this is the maximum output. And then we had the effective capacity, which is more practical. It counting the allowances the um, in a more realistic situation but even the effective capacity most of the time cannot be achieved because of a lot of randomness in the system for example the actual output that you can get out of a product or a system with a certain effective capacity cannot be achieved as the level of the effective capacity because most, you, you can have breakdowns in your system. You can have absent, your employee can get sick. You, you can have um, a failure of supply from your supplier. You can have um, any weather cat catastrophe uh, or any type of irregular or regular randomness in the system. That is going to, in long term, is going to make you not be able to achieve the effective capacity out of your equipment or, or system so the actual output that you're going to get is less than the effective capacity based on these scenarios we can actually situation we can actually uh, define some measurements to measure the effectiveness of the capacity in your system 
The first one is efficiency. Efficiency is defined as the actual output that you can get out of the system divided by the effective capacity. So as we said, actual output is more likely less than effective capacity. That means that efficiency is a value between 0 and 1 or 0 and 100 percent in terms of percentage. The other terms of measurement is called utilization. Utilization is defined as the actual output that you can get from an equipment or a system divided by the design capacity. So not only you cannot, as we learned before, not only you cannot get the um, effective capacity, of course, you're not going to get the design capacity. So for this utilization measure also, the actual output is going to be uh, less than the design capacity. So utilization is also a value between zero and one is going to be also less than um, the efficiency. And both the efficiency and utilization are measured in um, percentages. We're going to see examples of these uh, later on. Let's see an example for efficiency and utilization. Suppose a transportation company has a design capacity of 50 trucks per day. That's the maximum output that they can deliver. They can transport. They have, they have the capability to transport as much as 50 load of trucks per day. But the effective capacity is 40 trucks per day. Considering the allowances um, for a real life situation. And, but the actual output that they get based on the historical data out of this transportation system is 36 trucks per day. So this is the statistic, the data that they have shown. They have shown that the um, actual output is that they have used 36 trucks per day. So let's compute the efficiency and utilization for um, this transportation company. The efficiency is the actual output divided by effective capacity. So that's 36, the actual output, divided by 40, the effective capacity, which is going to give us 90, 90%. So the efficiency of this transportation company is 90%. How about utilization? Utilization is defined as the actual output divided by the design capacity. So that's 36 divided by 50, which is 52%. So the utilization for this transportation company is 72%. So 90% efficiency and 72% utilization. 